When it comes to mind-altering drugs, certain images might come to mind. A kaleidoscope of colors, the swinging 60s, counterculture. But recently, substances like LSD have made a long, strange trip themselves, right to the forefront of medical research. Doctors now think hallucinogens could help those with terminal diseases. Sounds revolutionary, but as you're about to see, psychedelic drugs have actually gone back to their roots. Here's our colleague from Radio Canada, Frederick Zalak. Pamela Sakuda is 59. She lives near Los Angeles with her husband, Norbert. Last year, she received some terrible news. I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic terminal colorectal cancer. And um, at the time, we didn't know when or how the disease would progress. We had gone from being extremely satisfied with our everyday existence to being devastated. I, I can't, even now I can't really conceive of a life without her. You worry about what is coming down the road to you, to your family, to all the plans that you had made. Um, the most immediate effect is you don't know what plans you can make anymore. In facing her terminal cancer, Sakuda became understandably anxious. She sought help from psychiatrist Charles Grobe of UCLA. He offered her psilocybin, a hallucinogenic drug found in magic mushrooms, but not for a short-term high. He thinks a single dose can change how she deals with stress in the long term. We're not treating the cancer per se, we're treating the secondary anxiety and the depression and the demoralization. If you look at the research data from the 60s, we'll find that there were a number of investigations of utilizing psychedelics with end-stage cancer patients with very impressive outcomes. Research on psychedelic therapies started in the 1940s, soon after Swiss chemist Albert Hoffman made a stunning discovery. Hoffman synthesized lysergic acid, creating LSD. In April 1943, he consumed a small dose to assess its properties. Going home on his bicycle, Hoffman saw his surroundings bend out of shape. He thought he had lost his mind. Hoffman not only discovered LSD, he opened the door to an unexpected form of therapy. Hoffman felt these, these compounds held tremendous uh, potential value to uh, alleviate suffering, that they could be you know, very, very effective tools in, in the hands of physicians uh, uh, in medicine and psychiatry. In the 50s and 60s, hundreds of peer-reviewed studies were published. Some scientists thought psychedelic drugs might be useful in treating alcoholism and drug addiction. There is a group of powerful new chemicals which affect man's mind like nothing man has ever known. Scientists in Saskatchewan and British Columbia were at the forefront of worldwide research on LSD. Over a thousand patients went to the Hollywood Hospital in a Vancouver suburb, including singer Andy Williams, actor Cary Grant, and Robert Kennedy's wife. For many, a single LSD dose changed the way they saw themselves and helped them stop their addiction. The treatments were supervised by the late Dr. Ross McLean and his assistant, Frank Ogden, now 85. It was their perception of themselves, and it was very noticeable when you gave them the mirror, because they saw themselves as others saw them. Lots of times when they held that mirror in front of their face, they would see themselves laying in a gutter. It amplifies sensory experience. It provides an enhanced capacity to appreciate aesthetics of nature. It might allow one to venture deeply into their own unconscious mind and explore their, their autobiographic history and perhaps come up with some insights. 
roughly, round figures, one-third of the alcoholics that we treated just once never had another drink in their life with five and ten year follow-ups. One LSD dose was thought to be more effective than years of psychotherapy, encouraging results in a field where conventional medicine couldn't offer much. But psychedelic treatments were also highly controversial. Dr. Ewan Cameron from the Allen Memorial Hospital in Montreal conducted research for the CIA in the 1950s. His patients were submitted to horrible brainwashing experiments with electroshocks and LSD. Clearly it damaged individuals who were treated and, in, uh, and I think in many respects it soured governmental authorities on supporting, funding and even approving uh, projects in the future. The LSD craze escaped the labs and entered university campuses across the West. Authorities clamped down by banning hallucinogenic drugs and the research that went along with them. An unfortunate casualty was that uh, psychiatric and medical investigators who were really pursuing valuable development of valuable new treatment models were forced to stop their work. <laughs> 